About a year ago, the historical foundation of Hillsborough and Orange County began to make plans for a series of Sunday afternoon events entitled Stores and Stories. Today, we have Mr. Owen Allison, who's been in and around Hillsborough most of his life, and he has an incredible memory and many stories to share about the West Hillsborough community. So, Owen, we're glad to have you with us today. Thank you so much. The Historical Foundation of Hillsborough and Orange County has begun a series we call Stores and Stories. And we're privileged today to have Mr. Owen Allison, who lived his youth in Hillsborough. He was born here. And he's interacted with Hillsborough, even though he's lived in Mebane and Eflin and Burlington, it still, I think, felt like home to him. You can hear how vivid his stories are. And his family has made important contributions to our family for generations. And I'm a, to our community for generations. And I am especially privileged that I knew even his brother, oh, uh, his, I, I knew his brother Bernard who would come by and pick me up on the city bus. My mama would give him 10 cents he ride me all day. She said it was the best babysitter she ever had. So it's been a privilege for me today to talk to Bernard's brother, Owen. Off of Vino Cotton Mills property. Which Williams was that? Do you know? He was a, lay, a layman preacher, and he lived in the first house back off of the street on the left-hand side. Oh, after you crossed the river? No, no, this is, this, his property joined the Cone Company's mill village. Oh, okay. Yeah, Mr. Mm -hmm. Williams did. All right. And, just... and he was kind of a lay preacher. Okay. Yeah, but he had a store on the right-hand side and that property joined mm -hmm. the uh, Cone Company property. Okay, all right. Yeah. Well, but, um, we can start with, with, Nash Street, and you can start on the corner, but we're really not going to, if we start in the 40s, we're not going to really get the full scope of what was at West End, because originally there was a full-fledged drugstore on the corner with a registered pharmacist, full drugstore, mm -hmm. and then the next was Kate's Brothers Store with a satellite post office in it. Mm -hmm. And they sold clothes, shoes, uh, hog feed. And then in the 40s, it could have been uh, Jimmy Mangum's dry cleaning in the next mm -hmm. building. And then the next building was a, a two-chair barbershop. And then, of course, the theater was full of bloom in, the, in 1940. Mm -hmm. And then, by that time, in 19, in 1940, Mr. and Ms. Lim Albright would have been running the cafe. Mm -hmm. And then there was an empty <coughs> lot, and then you had Bellevue Cotton Mill. Mm -hmm. And prior to that, there was uh, on Nash Street, there was three different stores. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But in 1940, they were probably been extended. I mean, mm -hmm. uh, they yeah. wouldn't have been going then. And then if you get over to uh, in front of Eno Cotton Mill, there was, well, wait a minute. We need to back up in that, in back of Kate's Brothers store, there was, uh, Mr. Bill Chance had a roller shop that covered steel rollers from the cotton mills with leather. Right. And then there was, uh, oh, uh, a building there that Mr. Scott Keats rented that uh, at one time they made compound 
out of Beef Tower that uh, you use to size yarn in, in cloth hmm. at the mill. And uh, I'm not sure about whether Mr. Robinson, Owen Robinson's Coca-Cola plant was still there in 1940 or not. Uh, and you see there was no street going to West Hillsboro on the north side of the railroad at this time. Hmm. It, and you had to go under the underpass and go around to get up there probably at night in around 1940. Yeah. Uh, I'm not sure about some of these dates that you're mm -hmm. talking yeah. about here. Yeah. But at, uh, then you had a little uh, business section in front of Eno Cotton Mill on the north side of the railroad. And Mr. Booster Godfrey had a, a grocery store and then there was uh, Lynn Elkins had a cafe and Mr. Ross Taylor had a two-chair barbershop and of course they all in those days uh, a lot of them had showers in the back for people who want to come and take a shower on Saturday. <laughs> and then Mr. Buck Murray had a store just across the street facing the railroad the same as these other buildings and uh, then there was a little store that another Riley owned before you get to Eno, uh, Eno Methodist Church just a little kind of a junk stand mm -hmm. drinks and stuff like that and then you had Mr. Paul Riley had a store that faced the railroad. And then you had Betty Riley's store which faced uh, in, uh, West Hill Avenue mm -hmm. there at the crossing. And then the next store up Ben Johnston Road would have been Mr. Williams' store, which uh, I don't know whether it was there in 1940 or not. But then you had... But that was south of the railroad track, right? Mr. Williams' store. Mr. Williams' store was between the railroad track and the and the, and Ben Johnston Road. Oh, okay. It was on the, on the right-hand side mm -hmm. of the road. Mm -hmm. And his home was on the left-hand side. Okay. But um, then you had uh, Cole and Riley had a store on the right-hand side going north of... Uh, West Hill Avenue, and then at one time uh, there was a store on the left, uh, right above there, uh, and now the name, <laughs> the name has got me now, but he owned a, a total of about four stores at different times in West Hillsboro. Mr. Riley? No. Uh, this uh, man you're trying to think of his name. The name I'm <laughs> trying to think of, and before I got out here, I, and I, uh, I'll get to it, maybe yeah. not right now. Mm -hmm. But uh, that pretty well covers the businesses. Mm -hmm. Now, in 1940, I'm not sure that King Street had ever been extended in 1940. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so, in fact, I'm satisfied it had because it was 48 when the bus ran. So, where the village diner is at today, there was no street. You had to, you had to turn off at an angle from Nash Street and go through Bellevue Mill Village in order to get over here to where and the village diner didn't exist and and 
and there was a house there. And you turned right and went up through the section up here to get out to uh, West Hill Avenue. But see, that's one of the things that really helped is when they extended Nash Street, I mean King Street, out to West Hill Avenue. And the bus started running in about 1947. Uh, this connected downtown area with West Hillsboro. Mm -hmm. And there was a time between downtown Hillsboro and the cotton mill folks and West Hill to where there are to some degree today they'd call it discrimination. Uh, you, uh, but you had to go downtown at that time then to pay your light bill. To, if you had a phone, you had to go downtown. And this was before the day in 1940, everybody wouldn't have had a bank account or a credit card or anything of this nature. And so these people had to, had to go downtown, but they wanted their money, but they wanted to go to West Hill. They wanted to go back to West End. Oh, didn't want them to mix socially, is that what you In say? a sense, mm -hmm. uh, this happened. Uh, you had, uh, uh, see it, I'm not sure in 1940, whether there was still a frame wooden grammar school right back of Booster Godfrey's grocery store there at what we call Mexico. That's what it was called in those days. Okay, what street was that on? Well, you see that was just on the north side of the railroad. They wasn't, the street didn't run up there. Okay. And, uh, uh, of course, Mr. Robinson that had the Coca-Cola plant also had Pope and Robinson Oil Company that had their tanks uh, out close to the where the Coca-Cola plant yeah. had been. Did they call that area Monkey Bottom? Uh, Monkey Bottom was back of Kate's Brothers store where the uh, uh, roller shop and where uh, the Coca-Cola plant was at this was all a, a, a big area down there, most all of it, except for maybe the cocoa plant Mr. Scott Cates or some of his brothers owned. And then there was two two-room houses that backed up to Bellevue Cotton Mills fence there. Mm -hmm. And that was Monkey Bar. Now there was a day long before 1940 when the circus and shows came that's where they, that's where they put it on was down and was in Monkey Ball. My uncle John Williams had a circus. He'd bring it up here from Cary. Yeah. And that's where they'd come to. Okay, well they showed. Uh, as a little boy, it seemed like to me, I was there to see uh, a show when they would, whites would black their faces mm -hmm. and, and you know, just let down the side of a bill, uh, a, a truck or something or other, mm -hmm. and this is what they used for changing and mm -hmm. for showing. <laughs> but uh, uh, this uh, this area, though, you see the right hand side of the railroad all through West Hillsboro over here. Uh, was uh, was all privately owned or rental property. Mm -hmm. um, Bellevue and Eno both, and it would have probably still been done in 1940. They couldn't have <coughs> they couldn't have a refrigerator because the the power came out. 
of the the meal oh. furnished the power to them. All right, and so therefore, at when daylight came, they cut the power off, and they wouldn't have power anymore until just before dark because power was put in those houses. I worked for Duke Power Company, went to work in 47, and about 1948 is when uh, Bellevue put the, put the uh, individual, uh, hooked up the individual homes for power, and they could have all this stuff, and they also had run city water. See, because city water wasn't run a lot of those places because they, they just didn't, uh, uh, well, it was outside the city limits to start with. And, uh, and so then, of course, when they put power in there, they uh, made, like a lot of houses, uh, they put a bath in the back porch mm -hmm. in each one of those mill houses. Up to that time, where did they get the water from? Uh, spick it out yonder from, uh, from, from the mill, from water, oh. out in the yard and tote it, just like you would from the spring of the well. Mm -hmm. Some of them had wells. Uh, uh, Eno Cotton Mill Village was, uh, there'd be a spigot down the street. And, of course, everything had out, outhouses. And this is one of the things that when Eno, after 1940s, started setting those houses off, people moved them and got homes that wouldn't have never had a home.